Christmas Eve and we need some of that snow on the opening clip. That's what snow in Texas looks like, very beautiful, but certainly nothing like that today. Let us take a look at that surface map, and we're not totally devoid of weather. We've got a couple of major processes going on. One is that California Atmospheric River now covering the Four Corners area. That's it right there. The sounding at Denver for this morning, looking at precipitable water up at the very top, showing 1.05 centimeters. That's about 0.41 inch. And that's pretty close to a record. The maximum ever observed, 0 0.45. So we're way up there near the top of the climatology. And if we bust out the precipitable water anomaly, we are exceeding climatological normals by over an inch in parts of southern Arizona. And let's lay out those absolute values. That's precipitable water. There's the atmospheric river coming right across Baja California into the Four Corners area. And you can see it doesn't take much moisture to approach record territory in Colorado. My favorite place to go to look at these atmospheric rivers is... UCSD, San Diego Scripps Oceanography Institute, and they've got this IVT plot right there. Values of 700 to 800 IVT, which is very high, coming into Arizona there. And let's see what happens over the next 24 to 48 hours. Very fast moving. So any precipitation duration will be kind of short, and the moisture plume will just rocket eastward into the Midwest area mostly over the Ohio River Valley area right there, hanging on to those 800s to 1000s, and coming into the Pennsylvania, New York City area by Christmas. And in terms of dynamics, heights, and vorticity, that's a great way to size things up. Here this is suggesting strong upper-level lift early this morning over California, bringing us up to the current time, Go up about nine hours, and there we go. So most of the lift at this point will be over Colorado and New Mexico as we record this and dumping out onto the plains this evening. And, you know, this, this isn't a very strong wave. It has opened up a little bit, but interacting with that moisture, it's certainly capable of producing rainfall and of course we've got the tropical plume coming up through texas and we're going to get back to that in just a minute and you can see another wave coming into california late on christmas so they're not done with the rain getting back to that weather map there's kind of a smorgasbord of stuff to look at here's a dry line plume actually that's post frontal dry line air two points down in the 30s and temperatures up near 80 the dry line located roughly from Dallas, Tulsa, down to Del Rio, and the true tropical air across East Texas up to Arkansas and Missouri. Very warm day up there near St. Louis and Kansas City. Here's that Pacific air coming into the southwestern U.S. and up north, an intrusion of Arctic air. Temperatures down to about zero. And as you go further north into Calgary, Edmonton, and Saskatoon, some bitter cold readings with blowing snow. In Wisconsin, we've got fog, and that's due to the strong warm air advection. You pass that warm, moist air. I mean, look at those dew points up near 40 over a cold surface, and they've had snow on the ground the past week. So, yeah, you're going to get fog from that. And let's go out to the Pacific. Cold Pacific air coming onshore. Showery weather in the Pacific Northwest. And let's go up to Alaska. Depending on where you are, it's either warm or cold. They do have warm air down in the Aleutians. This is unseasonably warm. Temperatures almost near 40 with liquid precip around Bethel. And then you go up further north minus 20s in the interior regions. So there is some Arctic air in place in the Northern Rockies and Mackenzie River Delta. Looking out over Northern Canada, 
pretty quiet. This is a very cold air mass and temperatures down about minus 30. So certainly chilly. And we drop down into Canada itself. They've got a powerful snowstorm moving through Ontario and Manitoba. So some inclement weather along the Trans-Canada Highway moving eastward today. And then in the Canadian Maritimes, outgoing occlusion. Yeah, that was my Discord. That wasn't your, your Discord. Had some messages coming in about Christmas. But uh, yeah, there's our system heading off the Newfoundland coast. Some strong onshore flow producing heavy snow in Labrador. And on the other side of that, some showery uh, snow showers, snow squalls moving through Newfoundland itself. And then you go up to Greenland, and they're back in that easterly flow due to the main cyclone being to the south. So once again, it's mild on the west coast. We're not seeing temperatures near 50 like we had a few days ago. The temperatures are more like right around freezing. Now a great way to visualize this moisture is with water vapor imagery. This starts out last night about 9 p.m. and goes through the overnight hours. And that's that moisture coming in from the west coast, spreading into Arizona, and taking on a stronger definition. And back behind it, coming into Southern California, is the subsidence, the downward motion. And that brings us up to the current time, the plume running from about Tucson to Albuquerque and up into the Colorado prairies. Now back in this region, yeah, that's strong subsidence. And you'll notice we're not devoid of clouds and precip. They're still a little bit hanging on, but that's because it is back in the lower levels. The water vapor imagery, just not very sensitive to stuff under 10,000 feet. If we pan over to the east and look at Texas, strong downslope flow. Winds gusting up to about 30 knots in parts of West Texas, and looks like we're kicking up some dust. Readings already up to 90 degrees at Wichita Falls, 89 at Breckenridge. So this is a strong downslope event. Wichita Falls record for December is 88, and they have busted that. So that's going to be a record for December. And a quick look at the Oklahoma Mesonet, 89. That's about the highest I'm seeing. That's around Walters, maybe? South of Lawton. Don't see any 90s on here. But in the Panhandle, around Guymon and Boise City, gusting to 42 miles an hour. These are how the temperature records stack up. These are forecast highs. We've already blown that at Wichita Falls, so they've set that record. And elsewhere, 85 at Midland, breaking the record for the date. And we've got 60s and 70s up there in Missouri, near the apex of that tropical moisture. Christmas Day temperatures looking like this, coming up into the mid-80s from Abilene to Waco, maybe down to Austin, and 70s all the way to Cairo, Illinois, up to Memphis, and even to Louisville, Kentucky. For Sunday, more of the same hot weather off the Texas Caprock to the DFW area. On Monday, the same thing, a little bit of moderation. On Tuesday, it gets worse. Not quite so hot in West Texas. That tells me maybe we've got a front on the move and some of that downslope has moved off into the eastern regions. But still, 80 in Louisiana and Mississippi. And Wednesday, continued warm along the Gulf Coast. This is indicative of a cold front kind of settling in across the I-20, I-10 corridor. And we have some record lows to talk about, finally, on the 26th, the day after Christmas, 24 at Quileute. Expecting 18 degrees on Monday at Seattle and 21 at Astoria and 24 at Portland. So some polar air is crossing the Rockies, as we talked about back on Wednesday. There's the lows on Tuesday down to 16 at Seattle, and 19 at Portland. 
And for Wednesday, the cold air is settling down into the coastal regions of California, 29 degrees out around the redwood forests near Arcata. So let's put it all together and look at our forecast. You can already see the atmospheric river over the Four Corners area, and that'll be coming out into the Central Plains tonight and into tomorrow as a dry system. Some storms do get going around Illinois, Indiana early tomorrow. So maybe a few rumbles out there around Ohio on your Christmas morning. Some snows from South Dakota up to Montana, and with things inclement out there in the Pacific Northwest, some snows in the higher elevations. If we move forward into Christmas and the following day, unsettled in the northwestern regions, not much going on in the central U.S., just more downslope. Another system heading through Ohio, Michigan, Indiana for Monday. And here comes another wave from the western U.S. for Tuesday, emerging out onto the plains and producing some thunderstorms and showers in Arkansas up to St. Louis. Some cold air trying to nose in for Wednesday, but doesn't get very far. Just not much push to this cold air, really. So it remains stalled out in this area right here, waiting on the next wave. And that appears to be it right there around New Year's. Stormy in the southeastern U.S., and that may be enough to pull that cold air south around the 2nd and 3rd. And yeah, we're finally cooling off. And the end of the run is when things tend to get freaky in the GFS. So we'll just kind of see what it's suggesting. Push a cold air, that could be the cold bias again and stormy in the northwestern U.S. around the 7th, but, you know, that's just crystal ball stuff, so we'll not worry about that too much. Checking out the weather at the North Pole. We're not going to see anything from the GO satellite because the slant angle is so low, so we have to use the polar orbiters, and that's what it looks like. You can see the cold air over the Greenland ice cap, the warm downslope air, that we talked about earlier with that easterly component. This is Greenland, and the North Pole is right in that area. This does suggest some overcast over the North Pole, but it can be very hard to differentiate that from the cold ice pack temperatures. According to the GFS model, temperatures appear to be about minus 15 Celsius in that area. It's about zero Fahrenheit. And as far as observational data, there's Greenland, there's the Canadian Arctic Islands, and the North Pole right here. So this is indicating wind flow coming about like this from around Svalbard. And we did see on that previous chart, this is kind of a dome of cold air. There's probably a little bit of upglide over that. So there could be a little bit of snow embedded in that overcast. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks for joining. We'll be back on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a great Christmas. Bye-bye.